Hello YouTube, in the bedroom here, yo guitar junkie, having a bad day today. Let me make some noise, and uh, then I'll uh, I'll tell you why. Got my three pedals going. So, yeah, I had uh, my uh, Demon FX Andy Timmons clone Dirty Boost on. I had my uh, Earthquaker Special Cranker and my GoCo Supersonic. So, the, um, the Orange Earthquaker. That's it. <laughs> That's it, really. That's all I use it for. It just pushes up enough of the, you know, juice. Gives you just enough snot. So yeah, and of course I started that with my vintage phaser, phase shifter. That gives me that kind of thing. So yeah, um, and of course, you know, my, was it 2016, you would say Gibson, I believe it is a tribute. I believe. I don't remember. No. Oh, Joey's Louise. So yeah. Two piece uh, maple. Some bird's eye in here. Real deal. Rosewood fingerboard. Keystone, I think they call those kind of uh, vintage tuners. Um, all satin finish with P90s and they're sweet. You just have to roll back on the volume and the tone to get that, what I call that sweet sound out of the P90s. So, um, 
yeah, I just rolled back a little bit on my volume and a little bit more on my tones. Uh, it's really sweet, clean, but I try playing clean. And unless I have like some grit behind me and I miss with the right hand, I could make up with the left hand because sometimes, you know, you have enough gain. You could play with one hand and it'll ring out. As you heard when I accidentally muted a string, and the gain on the amp is always, to be completely forthcoming, it's on four. <laughs> the gain is on four. It's normally between three and four. I, I keep on saying like 12 o'clock, but it never goes past four on there, you know, because I stack them. So, yeah, I'm just going to hold on to this because I feel more comfortable holding on to a guitar while I speak because I'm always fidgeting and moving and stuff like that. So... Yeah, I dealt with guitar chords. So even though I taped the two ends on the last one that I got, because I like the L shape, because I don't like that whole big chord sticking out of the bottom. I like it because it runs alongside of the guitars on, on mostly all of them. Um, so for that reason, I get the, the, you know, the one L and then the other one is just a straight and then, you know, it's another cable. So I pull another cable out, plug it in, that doesn't work. Throw in, and I just, I don't, I don't know why I just don't chuck them out. I hold on to them. So I ordered two new L-shaped cables. One is a muting feature on both ends, the straight end and the L-shaped end. And the other one is almost identical to the last one that I had. And I thought it was because I was running it over with the, the wheelie chair here. But it was the end because I was finding out with my Stratocaster that um, I was sitting on it and nothing was going. And I, I, I took the little compartment open in the back. I checked for the, you know, made sure everything was good. And it wasn't the, the input jack. It was the jack on the, on the whatever the break you call these things. You see how quick? It leaves your mind. Guitar cable. So yeah, two chords coming. So, um, and I also found a push-in. That's why I have a couple of leftover whammy bars. Because I was thinking, how do I have these extra whammy bars? Well, I got like three or four. Where did I come across these? And I realized that I had a couple um, sent to me I got some that was with a guitar and they also sent me one from the factory because it wasn't a factory arm and the I asked for a factory arm. So they gave me one temporarily and they sent me the factory arm on some of the push-ins. Well, I liked them so much that I bought the Floyd Rose push-ins that you have to change the coupling on it and then you have the little Allen key and you can push it right in, tighten it up. And that deal with screwing on the, coupl the coupling on the end, I don't have one out bags all the way over there and of course as soon as i go to try to find something i find everything but what i'm looking for right that happens to everybody so yeah so i got an arm coming to replace on my um squire contemporary because the the little doodad is loose on the inside and i can't get to it i had to remove the entire arm and if i'm going to do that to tighten up the little allen key i might as well just replace it and put a push in and that's why i have a couple extras i think i, I did that about two or three guitars and then i sold the guitar <laughs> and I kept that piece in there with the let, let it go with the arm and the assembly so um yeah i i came across um you know, just scrolling through YouTube videos, I came across the old um, Rockman X100. And yes, I have one. I bought this brand new, and I, I don't have anything but this and, you know, the, the bottom piece. I left it open just to show everyone that it's like... <laughs> It's spotless in there. It's got, and I never had any battery bleeds and that's clean. So before I even tried to put batteries in it, 
I remember always running this with a power cord. So when I saw videos on it, I was like, I'm almost, I'm, I, I know I have one of these. I always use a screwdriver because I'm afraid to break, you know, the little tabs on here. So, like, yeah, and I, I remember when we moved, I thought it was missing from the box. I thought someone got into it and, and took it, knew what it was, whatever. And I found it, and uh, I just let it stay in the case. And now I saw videos on it, I'm like, you know what, this was like one of their first kind of big things that I got uh, that was like what I call like a multi-effects pedal instead of buying separate ones. I just love the sound of the Boston guitar and um, and even Def Leppard used these. And Sammy Hagar even mentions that he says when he's working on a song he'll plug into the, to the Rockman and stop playing. So I always held on to it. And then watching videos on it and hearing it, I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? I really like to play to that. I really like to hear how that, because I just, I like the way, I like the sound of it. The way he incorporated the chorus and the echo. Just enough where the echo is almost like a, like a, a reverb cranked up with the distortion sound. And um, let me see, I, I pulled it out. And like I said, before I even put any batteries in it, I tried looking for the end the adapter and I had like a multi adapter one that you had to, but I don't have the other ends so I don't know what happened to it um, I could have sold it with something else with another pedal that I had or, or it was it worked with another multi effects pedal or something like that so I didn't have it so I had to buy one on Amazon and it gives you certain voltage meters on the back and different ends and it actually it fit in here and I turned it on and it just you know, the light doesn't go on, and I had nothing but like a bzz, bzz. So I unplugged it, then I put batteries in it. And of course, we always have, we buy that 20-pack that of double A's and triple A's from, you know, the big box stores. And I just barely had enough batteries, you know, because it takes eight batteries. I, then I plug it in, and I go, okay, it's still, it's still not working. This side... The low input works, but the high input, nothing. And um, I was like, but none of the other effects work. It just goes to the max volume and it, that's it, on and off. So I go to play, you know, as, as I was going through my giant Tupperware container up there, and I had a lot more pedals, believe it or not. I started buying them in eight, 1982. Um, and sold a lot of them because the price of pedals were going up. And when I was on Long Island and that, that the, the stock market crashed and my mortgage nearly doubled, I was selling these pedals to pay my mortgage. It was sad. I had to give up, uh, you know, a lot of uh, high-end expensive stuff at a good price so people buy it so I could put it towards my mortgage. And um, and that's before I did the short, short uh what is it? Uh, short sale on it? I did, uh, no, I did a, I did a modified. I modified my mortgage, and then I didn't read the fine print, and I had to um, resubmit everything three to four months later. Um, and I didn't, and they wanted interest for the, you know, I went from twenty four to forty two. No, twenty four, sorry, from twenty twenty three to forty two, and then I got it down to sixteen. And then because I didn't re renew my paperwork in the, the time, you know, three to four months, it went back up to 42 and then he wanted interest <laughs> on it. So I did a short sale and got the hell out of, you know, Long Island. And it's the best thing I ever did. So, but again, I had to sell a lot of stuff that I had, a lot of, you know, vintage original stuff that I bought for like 39 49 69 dollars back in the day that was worth a couple hundred you know, crazy. So as I'm looking for this, you know, unfortunately, you know, plugging it, it in up and putting the batteries in, it still doesn't work <clears throat> properly. So um, if anyone knows where I could send this, a trusted, reliable place 
and they could fix it, refurbish it, whatever. Um, and that would be great because I would always said to myself, yeah, I would, I would, you know, I still have that. It's one of those things where, you know, these things were like four to, to 500 bucks used. And I kept on saying, it's just one of those things where I'm just so glad I still have it. So I didn't pay that much for it at the time when it was brand new. I forget what the price was. I thought it was expensive at the time, but you know, um, for this little piece, <laughs> little plastic box that you can clip on your pants. But it's just something that it's a nostalgia thing. You know, I'm glad I still have it because some of the pedals that I had, even a boost pedal that I gave to my bass player that I had as a kid, you know, I kind of wish I didn't give it to him. And I, I don't want to, you know, be an Indian giver, but it's the kind that you plug into the amp then you plug your cable into that and then it's got a little on and off switch with a volume knob. And I used to use that all the time on my Fender Princeton that's right down there. And I, you know, just for the, and it still worked. I gave it to him. So, cause he had a little cheesy amp he was using at the time. And I says, here, this will boost it. So it was, you know, for those reasons, I wish I still had it. Now, the other thing is when I was going through my, my box, I found my Dunlop Rotovi pedal. This is the one where it doesn't have the red end on it. It's got the, it's like a steel button end on it. Let's see. And then you could switch, I think, from chorus to rotary. And you have a volume, I believe this is the volume knob, and then you could adjust the speed. And it'll show you the lights flashing on it. So I pulled this out, and I was like, I really used to love this pedal. And I like the way Robin Trower uses it. And um, I think Zach Wilde uses one too. And I was like, but I, I always had an issue with it. It was always just something, it, and the same thing happened. I, I plugged it in to my board. Wait, I plugged it in by itself. Just put the, uh, the power cord on it, guitar in, out to the amp, nothing else, and it worked. And I was like, wow, like, you know, what happened? Um, I was messing around with it. So then I figured, oh, I'm going to take my, my Digitech Venture Vibe rotary pedal. You know, it's like three in one. And I'll put that in its place. I did that. Gave it its own separate power cord, just like before. Plugged it in. Went to, to try it out. And nothing. Zero. I was like, oh, man. So then I'm like, wait, wait, you know, let me just check this and check that. And I'm going through everything, making sure I didn't unplug something else. I'm very particular about my board. I use static free cables from end to end. Each thing has its own outlet, except for, you know, the tuner, the wah, and the vintage vibe, because when they had the separate outputs, they didn't, they didn't uh, um, operate properly. They needed, they didn't need direct power. They needed like a chain, a daisy chain or batteries that make them sound better. Too much juice was just giving me a problem. That's what I found out. So those are the only three that have a, a daisy chain linked to one another. But the Polytune also has a buffer, so it pushes juice to the Wawa and to the flanges. So that just works perfectly. See, it's always a science to it. That's why I have my buddies that call me up and ask for my advice. Um, <clears throat> so then I checked that all out. And then I just like, you know, making sure the guitars were working. So I pull another guitar and as I pull the cord out of one guitar and plug it in, I realize that there's nothing, no juice on the end of the cord. I'm like, oh man. So then I go through my cords and I'm like, oh, I got another cord that's not working. Uh, oh, I got one that's working now. Let me, okay, let me use this. I plug it in, it still doesn't work. I remove it from the pedal board. I put the Venturevi back on it and it works. Then I'm going, Maybe the cord wasn't working for my Rockman. So I do the same thing. I put the batteries back in the Rockman, use a different cord, and it only works on the low end, not on the other end. And it doesn't give me all the effects. But it was just like a torturous, you know, kind of thing. Because then I'm, I got cords here and cords there, and the picks are falling out of guitars and falls on the pedal board, and I got to look for it because it blends in. And I'm like, 
I'm flipping and flying in here, or, or, or nice way of putting it. I was having a, a fit. <laughs> so, yeah, so this thing here, again, as usual, it started working, and then it just fizzled out. And I don't know what to do. This is the model JH-4S. And I bought this brand new at the time as well. So, yeah, if, uh, I don't know what, where I could send these, if I could send that back to the Dunlop people and have them fix it, but they go for 300 bucks, 299 brand new. Is it, you know, should I just buy a new one? Um, I like how you could adjust it, you know, you don't have to, you know, bend over and turn a knob, you use the, the pedal. But how much do I, am I going to use it? Is it worth 300 bucks? How much can they charge me to repair it? I don't know. Plus shipping. Same thing with the uh, Rockman, excuse me. Um, as much as I like that, I like to have it working. You know, too bad there's not someone that's here in Florida that I could bring it to and some kind of specialist that could fix it kind of thing. And my other thing is <clears throat> that I used to use I, I this I'm probably going to send to one of my best friends that's a uh, professional musician I had said this is what I used to use all the time and so I always used a boost um, I, I figured it out on my own before I learned that you know Beck used to use a boost back in the in the 70s so on and so forth and this is what I always used uh, when I stopped using that one you plug into the amp. This is the one that I used to use. And then this stopped working. And my buddy said, uh, you know, I could fix it. Send it to me, I could fix it. Not only is he a, a, a professional musician, he's a, he's a fantastic musician. He could, he's a great guitarist. Um, I always tell him he's got that funk groove like Satriani. He's got that, you know, he's got his own little, little, niche in that going and um and he plays amazingly anything anything you put music in front of him he'll read it he'll play it like that he also plays the keyboard and saxophone and flute and bass so you know and he also does his own work on his guitars he used to come over to my house um and you know back in new york and work on my guitars for me as well so yeah this is the one i used to use and this is a clean boost which is pretty cool. And I like the settings on this because this would take a single coil strat and thicken it up. So that's why I always had it on my pedal and I used it all the time. It was on and that's why I have the tape over it. That's where, that's the setting that I had on it all the time. And it's not working, but this I'm gonna send to him and say, here, <laughs> see what you can do. The other ones, if you know where I could, you know, how I can get them fixed, leave a comment. And that would be great. Um, if not, I don't know what else <laughs> to do with them. I love having them, but I love them more if they work. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Well, that's all I got to say. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. Better tomorrow. Hmm, maybe not.